Hello, and thank you for tuning in to the Stuff I Heard podcast. I'm your host, Joshua Peak, and we're getting into May now, about halfway through May. What is this, the 15th? It is halfway through May. Wow. May is just trucking right along. I'll tell you what, <clears throat> sometimes in life, you get busy doing a lot of things, and time really gets advantage of you. Um, there was a movie with Adam Sandler where... It's called Click, where he goes to Bed Bath and Beyond, and he runs into Christopher Walken in the supposed Beyond department, and he gets a special remote. And he finds in life that there's a lot of things that he doesn't want to do or doesn't feel like is worth his time, and he wants to hurry up to get to other things, and he keeps hitting this fast-forward button. And before he knows it, he's fast-forwarded his entire life, and he's missed everything. And... I think that in life, a lot of us have regrets as we get older and the things we regret is the things that we missed along the way. And somewhere around the age that I'm at now is when you start going, Hey, maybe I need to appreciate these times and, and spend this time and, and really like soak it in. Um, but still I'm guilty of constantly looking at the things that I have to get done and feeling like, like I'm never caught up. Um, I have in the last week, we've had, uh, some folks out here doing some work for us. Uh, we got the back deck restained with a resurfacer and, um, it looks good. It looks really good. Uh, I have taken some time and taken the furniture off the back porch and I'm refinishing the furniture as well. Uh, I had built some cedar furniture. You guys can probably see. If you're on YouTube, you can see the chair that I'm sitting in now. Um, but if you're familiar with me at all, you know that I've built um, the furniture that's in this podcast studio, all the tables, all the chairs, um, not knowing how to do any of this stuff before I started, but I just needed to do it. And I felt a weird compulsion to do it. Um, and I just sort of took the ball and ran with it. And in life, like I've learned that there's things that sometimes need to be fixed and you go, how do I fix that thing? Well, you know, we do have an age where there's YouTube and there's lots of people willing to help. And there's lots of people willing to say, Hey, I can help you. Is there something I can give you any instruction on? Um, and we are building community a little bit at a time. We're building community within ourselves, within our own communities and with the people we know. And we're realizing how we're all connected a little bit more as we do that. And so I am asking my community right now, um, who out there amongst you has experience with iMovie? I have been doing this podcast and doing this YouTube stuff now for years on a sort of shoestring budget. I have spent money on things like microphones and soundboards and cameras and stuff like that, but I've also been using the free software that comes on an iMac or a, a Mac Pro, whatever any Apple product has iMovie as a free thing. Um, last night <clears throat> with playing around with it, I had all sorts of video that I'd taken over the last week of, you know, the guy doing the back deck project, um, me redoing the theater furniture. And yesterday uh, I'm part of this group because of a, a friend of ours, Danny Shaw, I'm in this uh, Carolina Jeep meet group and I've been going with Danny to some of these Jeep excursions. And yesterday I got the opportunity to go over to a fellow Jeeper from the Carolina Jeep meet group. Uh, you can find them on Facebook, Carolina Jeep meet. A lot of helpful people. Um, one of the admins is a guy named uh, Bradley Hudson who owns uh, Arrowhead Off-Road. And he's got a company that basically can help people rig their four by fours with just about everything that you can imagine, lift kits and, you know, performance upgrades and tire upgrades and everything that you can imagine that has to do with four by fours. Um, he started off specifically with Jeeps, but he says he's expanding more and more into Broncos and other, you know, off-road vehicles uh, and side by sides and everything. So, I mean, it's an opportunity to help out a friend um, which I don't know this guy that we went to help, uh, James Hyman. Um, uh, but I know him now, I know him well enough to know that, you know, we went over and we helped him, um, 
for about six hours, three of us, four of us wrenched all over his Jeep and helped put a lift kit on there. I'd never done lift kit before. So it was pretty interesting to learn. It was interesting to be with Danny and, and see his expertise and, and Bradley and see his expertise. And, and, um, and James is a nice guy. He's got a great garage. He's got plenty of tools, He's got all the right tools. Um, and you know, it was, it was interesting to see this community of people go together and help somebody, um, where he could have taken it to somebody and spent a lot of money that he really didn't have, um, or money that could be spent doing something else. But there's, there's a certain satisfaction in doing it yourself and knowing that it's done right and knowing that you've learned how to do it. And if you've got a group of people that are like, Hey, let me help you figure this out. Then you sort of build that community even bigger, which is the point. That's the whole point of this, right? Um, get out of your comfort zone get around people that you don't know. Maybe you'll have something in common that you didn't realize you had in common. Uh, I learned a lot yesterday. I got my hands dirty. I got my, got my whole body dirty. Uh, but I learned a lot and I was able to help. Um, you know, sometimes they just need an extra pair of hands. Sometimes they need somebody to, to hold the camera and shoot a few pictures, uh, you know, whatever it is, but here I'm asking my community. This is, you guys are my community. I've been using this free iMovie thing to produce my YouTube videos. And I feel like it's time for me to possibly spend money. Uh, iMovie has suddenly stopped working. I was able to put together a short movie last night um, using iMovie. I selected all the stuff I wanted to have. I put music to it uh, as the background. It was actually the videos that I'd taken, the videos and photos that I'd taken of uh, messing around with this Jeep yesterday. And I posted it and it worked fine. And then I went on to do the next project and all of a sudden, nothing worked. Like I, I would grab the images from the top screen and drag them down and it, and it would give me a warning saying, um, uh, this is, this isn't going to work. Uh, I actually took a photo of it. It said, uh, specifically, let's see what did I already delete it? What the heck, Josh? It says, you are combining audio and video clips outside the primary storyline. You cannot add video clips to existing audio-only component clips. What? What the heck does that mean? I got no idea what that means. I am lost. Um, I, I don't know how to fix that. I don't, I don't know what's wrong with iMovie. I've tried to... I've tried to reset my computer. I've tried to delete iMovie. I've tried to um, go into a thing where it says that as you're closing it to hit the options and command button at the same time and then reset your preferences. I've done a thing where it says to uh, hold the option button as you're opening it and it'll bring up a thing where you can select a new project and, and basically it resets the entire iMovie. Uh, I've tried deleting the program, which is like, over three gigabytes. I've tried deleting it and rebooting it and none of that's working. And, <clears throat> you know, I'm not, I'm not making much money from making videos at all. Um, if anything, the, I'm losing money every year, but I'm having fun doing the projects and I'm having fun learning. And I think that's kind of my goal is the learning. Uh, it keeps me entertained enough to want to make more. I mean, it's, it's sort of like, uh, it's sort of like, I guess the analogy would be playing golf. Uh, you go out and you play golf and you're no Tiger Woods, but you might hit a few balls that day where you go, wow, look at me, Tiger Woods. Woo. You know, I mean, it's, it's, you know, it, for a large part, it is a fruitless activity. It is a fruitless endeavor. It doesn't give you what you want or what you think you would get, but for me, it, it, I don't know what it is. It, it, it makes me happy to make the content. It, help, it makes me happy to know that I'm connecting with other people and that other people seem to watch it and enjoy it and share it and that kind of stuff. And maybe it helps somebody else. Maybe something that I say can encourage them or possibly, you know, get them to go outside of their comfort zone and find friends to help them. Um, <clears throat> and I guess my question is, is two questions here. Uh, first off, <clears throat> is there anybody out there that's really familiar with iMovie and can tell me what I'm doing wrong or what I need to do different? And secondly, 
do I need to just bite the bullet and go ahead and buy something like uh, Final Cut or, you know, do the monthly subscription to Premiere Pro? And <clears throat> I know that I can write it off as a tax write off, as a business expense for the podcast, for the YouTube channel. Um, but I, I, I mean, am I there? Am I at that point? Is that, is that something that is like, well, the free option is no longer available, Josh. So you got to spend money now. I mean, the free option is available. I can still use iMovie. Like I did two videos last night, just using my phone, but it was literally me just like dragging images to this thing. I couldn't manipulate anything because it's so tiny. Um, I couldn't really see my project before I published it. Um, not, not like I can on a computer. And sometimes the things that I'm doing, I need to be able to see it on a computer because there's sections that I may have to edit or video that I have to add volume to with, you know, some background music or something like that. And so I need the access to be able to do it on my computer. Um, I tried to download a few programs last night through the uh, application store on my Mac and I didn't like any of the video editor programs that it downloaded. Uh, they just, they're not user friendly. So here's another question. Is anybody out there really familiar with Final Cut or Premiere Pro? And they can kind of give me some advice on what they would prefer, what they like, what they don't like. Uh, what are your suggestions? Help me out. Please let me know. Um, leave comments anywhere you can. If you know me, talk to me. If you don't know me, uh, write me, um, stuff I heard podcast at gmail.com or, you know, there's links everywhere. <laughs> you can find me on Facebook. You can find me everywhere. Just let me know. I need advice. Advise me. So this is the stuff I heard podcast. Let me talk about some stuff I heard. Okay. Um, there's a few more comedians added to the Burt Kreischer's fully loaded tour. Uh, People are signing up regularly to join this tour. If you see this coming to your area, go out and get tickets. The fully loaded comedy festival is going to be amazing. Right now, I think they're up to probably 12 comedians, 12 A-list comedians. We're talking comedians who normally sell out big venues, and they're all going to be together for this. Uh, probably the one that everybody's most familiar with is Dave Attell. He used to host Insomniacs. Um, He's had uh, bumping mics on Netflix. Um, he's been everywhere. He's been in movies. Uh, Joey Diaz has joined the comedy tour. Fortune Feimster, Nikki Glaser, uh, Mark Norman. Um, God, there's so many. I don't even remember them all off the top of my head. But check it out. Fully the fully loaded tour. Uh, you can find it everywhere on the internet and uh, get tickets. I'm going to the Lawrenceville, Georgia show. I'll be sitting by the third baseline if you guys want to go and say, hey, what's up, man? I'll be there. Um, so yeah, more people joining the show. Super happy. I just listened to a Time Suck episode uh, that was really dark. Um, somebody called the Dating Game Killer. Uh, really, really awful person. They did awful, awful things. And it was so awful that he gave like a warning before he started the podcast. He goes, listen, this gets really graphic. And if you have a problem with this stuff, like don't just skip this episode, listen to something else. And it's pretty bad. Um, he tries really hard to make some of this stuff in history um, a little funny by adding some comedy. And he does, he tries really hard in this. But I got to tell you, some of the graphic stuff that he described of how this guy, you know, hurt women and children. And um, I had nightmares about it. And um, I wanted to finish the podcast to find out how it ended. And I knew that Dan would make it funny. And he did. But there was parts in it where it, it kind of haunted my dreams a little bit. And I was like, OK, I got to I'm old enough now that I can do the lucid dreaming where you realize it's a dream and wake yourself up. Um, I can do that. And I haven't gotten really great at realizing it's a dream and then converting it. Uh, so I woke up a few times and had to like calm myself down and then go back to sleep. But yeah, it's, um, it was pretty tough to listen to. Um, 
I mean, not tough to listen to. He makes it really fun to listen to. It was it was tough to process the imagery of some of the stuff this guy did. He was an awful, awful person. But let's talk about some cool stuff, okay? So I did a podcast on here with with uh, Matthew Tarleton, host of Part Time Struggle. Um, I've been listening to his podcast since, and uh, he's getting way more comfortable behind the microphone now. Um, you know, it's like anything; it's a muscle. The more you work it, the better you get at it, right? So he and I sort of talked about the movie The Batman. He asked me if I'd seen it. I told him no. Well, I have seen it now, and I texted back and forth with him a little bit about it. Um, once I saw it, I gotta say. I liked the movie with one exception. Okay. If they'd have done one thing different, I probably would have really loved it. So I grew up watching Batman, um, like everybody else with, you know, the first movie, the Tim Burton movie and everything is very comic book styling Jack Nicholson with the flamboyant makeup and the over dramatization of the character, the Joker, um, but still a decent movie for what it was. And at the same time, there was the Dark Knight series that was on like cartoon channels and stuff at the time. And uh, famously, Mark Hamill is the voice of the Joker. Um, I grew up watching that Batman with that Harley Quinn and that Robin and that world of these bad guys. And in that Dark Knight series, um, you learn some of these characters and you get used to how they're portrayed. And in the Batman, this latest movie that's on HBO max right now, um, Robert Pattinson is playing Batman and you got Zoe Kravitz playing uh, Catwoman. Um, but you got this Paul Dano playing the Riddler. And I think he is a good character for the Riddler, but when they start showing him on the screen in, in the really thing the biggest thing that bothers me about this is they have his mouth covered now the riddler from the cartoon and from the comic books i'm sure uh was always a little bit smarter than batman but 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 we get caught i mean he still would get caught because batman's supposed to be way smarter uh but he would perplex batman and get batman into trouble and and almost reveal batman at every turn um Amazingly, as smart as the Riddler was, he I don't think he ever knew that Bruce Wayne was Batman. Oh, spoiler alert, if anybody didn't know that. Uh, (laughs) Just kidding. So in this like real portrayal of this movie, they got him on screen making these videos and he's got his his mouth covered. And it's like, like, what are you doing? Did anyone not think about this, about how stupid this is, that you got this guy's mouth covered and you can't hear what he's saying? I mean, the Riddler was very articulate. He could, you know, enunciate. And he was crazy, but why have his mouth covered? I mean, Jesus, is nobody involved at the studio where you go, no, 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 this seems like a terrible idea. I don't mind them like making James Gordon black dude. Uh, Jeffrey Wright is an excellent actor. No problem with that. I got no problem with that at all. I got no problem with the fact that they used Robert Pattinson, you know, Mr. Vampire, sparkly vampire to be a bat. Um, he does the role justice. Uh, they took the idea and this happened very quickly, but they did show him writing in a journal where it says year two, like he's keeping up with what he's doing. And I noticed that tiny little print, but they never mentioned it past that moment. And if you missed that, which I talked to Matthew and he missed that part, um, this is supposed to be him learning to be Batman and learning what he's supposed to do and how to do it. So he doesn't have all the cool Batmobile, you know, stuff and, you know, all of the, the fancy stuff that he gets later. This is supposed to be a rough version of Batman, him learning to be Batman. And learning to be a vigilante and not get shot as much and that kind of stuff. But in that, um, they missed that little part as well, other than a, a brief image at a piece of paper. If you missed that part, you were like, yeah, I don't get it. What are they doing with Batman here? Why do they reboot him this way? This is so silly. But this is supposed to show you that in between part. <clears throat> now, I really like Zoe Kravitz playing Catwoman. I thought she did a great job. Um, 
I even liked John Turturro playing uh, Carmine Falcone. And what was it? Um, who was the penguin? Um, the other guy playing the penguin. It's great. It's great. A lot of good A-list actors in this. Um, but you just screwed up covering the Riddler's mouth. Why cover his mouth? He's supposed to be like this teasing character of, you know, tormenting Batman and tormenting the city of Gotham. And you over half the movie, you got a mouth cover like this. I mean, I'm, I'm like, seriously? This is just as bad as the Dark Knight whenever y'all did the, the version with Christian Bale and he insisted on doing his own voice. Even through the, and I'm like, why can't you just dub it? Do a readover later, you know, James Earl Jones style, like Star Wars, have him talking to a thing later in a deeper voice. I mean, did he, does he really have to do that? That part throws you off that entire series, even though the rest of it was filmed great, written great, acted great. Him insisting on doing the forced <laughs> with his voice is just awful. Um, I wish somebody was in charge over at, over at DC that was like, hey, this is a terrible idea. Let's do this one thing differently and it'll be really awesome because that would have been really awesome. Uh, Paul Dano did a great job of portraying the Riddler and I think they're going to do more with him. I hope they're going to do more with him. Um, he he just comes across as crazy enough to be the Riddler and like he's that good an actor. Um, and he did a good job. They all did a good job. Everybody played their part well. Just somebody at DC has got to learn that you can't have people's mouths covered and you got to be able to hear people. Okay. And I wish TV and movies in general would stop with the whole uh, someone texting and you're filming it from way back and you go and you're supposed to read what they say. I mean, there's been a few shows where they actually are smart about it and the things they're typing, they show as bubbles on the screen so that you can watch it so that I can watch it. Cause otherwise you're like, what did it say? I don't know. We're just supposed to know you showed it for three seconds, five seconds. Come on. Your job is to tell a story, tell a story so people can follow it. Okay. All right. Moving on. Um, on Amazon, there's a show called outer range. Josh Brolin is the main character. He's a big cowboy guy. Uh, I have made a comment before that Outer Range is Yellowstone meets Twilight Zone. And I am correct. I watched the rest of the season. It looks amazing. I think that they can do a lot with this. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. If you have seen it, good. I'm going to talk about it right now. If you haven't seen it, just skip this part because I'm going to talk about it. So the main character finds out at the very end that his granddaughter is the freaking girl that he's fighting with the most. She's from, he's from the past. He's from the 1800s. And he came to this time and he grew up with his family and he's, he knows about this hole before the hole gets there. And he's contemplating, you know, what, what do I do? How do I, how do I, how do I get around this? Whatever, where, where does it go? He got pushed into it by her as an adult. Um, he didn't know what would happen, but when he came to, it was like two years in the future and suddenly this mining company had taken it over and he saw people from his past in the future. He jumped back into it and came back to this time. There's this weird time rift inside of this hole that is no one can understand or explain. Um, the old man who his counterpart is that he's fighting with is obsessed with this hole. And I'm not exactly sure why, because they haven't told you um, the, the old man's uh, weird son that sings a lot. Um, he like ingests some of this dark time sand stuff and he sees the future and he is compelled with this woman who is a stranger, but is not. And it leaves a lot of questions. Like it leaves itself to a lot of storyline that you don't see. Plus there's something going on weird with the main character's wife with her and this bear. Like she found a bear cub and she, was going to bury it. And then she changed her mind. She put it in a hut. And the next thing you know, she's literally life or death fighting with a giant grown female bear looking for her cub and she kills it. And 
I don't know exactly what's going on with her. Uh, it's a crazy scenario with her. Um, these Buffalo come out of nowhere. There's a, there's one Buffalo in particular. It's walking around with Indian arrowheads in its back and the girl, uh, Imogene Poots is her name. Is that right? Did I say that right? Yeah. Imogene Poots. Uh, she takes one of the arrows out and the Buffalo runs away. And then later on, Josh Brolin takes an arrow out and then it runs away. And I'm like, I'm amazed at the show. The show is interesting. It's very, it's very spooky. Um, plus there's a weird element where one of the boys sings all the time and I don't know what that's all about. They haven't explained that part. There's a lot they haven't explained. And, you know, the police chief somehow follows a trail of this dark sand stuff and ends up in the past. And she didn't like fall through a hole or anything. She's just suddenly in the past with all the Buffalo. And one of the kids digs down in the dirt and makes the hole appear and Buffalo comes shooting out of it. And I'm like, this is a chaotic show, man. I dig it. I'm in it. I like it. Um, I'm also still watching flight attendant on, uh, HBO max. Uh, it's good. Um, it leans itself a lot to alcoholism and split personality disorder and, um, a murder mystery scenario with the international thing of one of the women has stolen some government secrets. And now there's all these people after them and the CIA may be after them and someone in the CIA might be dirty and you don't really know what's going on. Um, I'm also watching shameless, uh, on Netflix. Uh, I missed it when it was popular. And so I'm catching up. I'm on season four. A lot of things are happening. A lot of, uh, a lot of addiction being addressed and how addiction turns really dark for your family and how it affects the people around you and how sometimes it affects the person themselves with the decisions they make and how, uh, sometimes they feel like the addiction is the only thing they can do because they don't deserve anything better. Um, there's lots of behind the scenes messages that are given as you're watching this train wreck of a family go through life and try to grow up and try to navigate it. Um, yeah. So anywho, I'm gonna wrap this up, but I do want to put out there again, if anybody has an experience with iMovie and can tell me what to do, please do. If you guys think I should move on and just bite the bullet and get a better program, do that. I honestly don't know how I'm going to make this movie appear anywhere. So uh, I do have a few tricks up my sleeve. One of them may be to airdrop it to my phone and then load it from my phone onto YouTube. And that may end up what I have to do. So again, if anybody has any suggestions, let me know. Uh, I'm going to wrap this up. Thanks for being on the podcast or thanks for being a part of the podcast, listening to the podcast and supporting the podcast and me in general, um, you know, words of encouragement go a long way and I do appreciate it. Uh, thank you to my family for putting up with me doing this and for, uh, continuing to support me even when I make you all crazy and make myself crazy. So I love you. Thanks for listening. Uh, and as always cue the cow.